everyone today we'll go through chapter 14 which is on waiting lines and keying theory models so line can form in many different situations uh, whether it is a, a queue on a phone like we make a call to a company and we are asked to stay on the line because uh, we have to wait till the, that service is provided or it could be in a shopping mall where we stand in a queue or a line to be serviced or it could be maybe car wash where you are in a line for getting your car washed or it could be some kind of repairs so lines can form or queues can form in so many different situations now lines could be of people so people standing in a queue or line or maybe on phone or lines could be of items like something waiting to be repaired maybe there is a machine breakdown in a production facility and that machine has to be sent to maintenance department for getting repaired or it could be again car wash or car repairs and things like that so when the line is formed by people or human beings so obviously there is a emotion attached to that so if the line or queue is big or service is taking a lot of time so obviously different types of emotions can be experienced by people who are in line or queue items as such uh, may not have any emotions for example a machine may not be pissed off because it is getting delayed but again if you link those items uh, or machines or any equipment which is non-human so obviously it is owned by somebody so again there is a linkage that uh, any delay or any service issue can cause a lot of uh, difficulty with people who are associated with that so in general waiting line or queue could have these uh, features like uh, let's say we have a service facility there will be some arrivals so whether it is people or items they will arrive and obviously a queue formation may take place so they will form a queue if uh, the service facility is already being used and once the number comes they get the service and finally they will depart so there will be a departure there are various uh, costs associated with these kind of situations so let me make a graph here so in this graph on x-axis let's say we have service quality and on y-axis let's say we have cost so we are able to quantify various features in terms of cost so it makes sense that uh, if you talk about cost of providing service and as the service quality improves or increases obviously cost of providing service also will increase so you could see this kind of pattern for cost of providing service so for example if a company decides that uh, they will not let the queue to become very large so instead of one they may have two service facilities so that people can go through the service facility quickly but obviously that is a better service or better quality but the cost is going to be more as you increase number of service facilities so obviously it is an increasing pattern now as you increase service quality cost of waiting time will obviously go down so there is some cost associated with how much people wait so sometimes they may become impatient and leave and the company may lose that business maybe even for future it will look like this something like this so this is cost of waiting time so as the service quality improves the cost of waiting time comes down because people or items will have less and less time to wait in queue and they will be serviced quickly so the cost associated with the customer uh, disappointment and things like that will reduce now if we add these two 
you may get this total curve something like this so this is a total expected cost this total expected cost is basically obtained by adding cost of providing service and cost of waiting time this point somewhere here you have if you go back to this x axis so this will be the optimal value for this kind of service facility so this will minimize the total cost so obviously one can increase the service quality but that will increase the service cost also and as a result uh, total cost will go up so this will be the most economical value uh, for this uh, situation to operate at now let's look at one example from the book and see how these costs help us to optimize the service quality so i'm going to look at an example from the book and this problem is from the back of the chapter this is 14 10. now if you read the problem there are two things which are already available and i'm going to write that down service cost is given as eight dollars per hour and arrival can calculate 300 divided by 8 is about 37.5 per hour let's call a to be the number of customers and at the top i'm going to going to put number of clerks three four four a number of customers uh, indicated in the problem is same for all situations so i'll put now let's uh, call b as waiting time per customer so as you can see in the problem the waiting time will decrease as the number of clerks increases so waiting time with one clerk is one by six so next row let's say this is total waiting time so this we can obtain by multiplying a and b so a times b and 15 so total waiting waiting time per shift decreases as you can see as we increase number of flux now d is cost per cost per hour and we can use this to find value of lost time per shift which is c cross t now the next row f is so total pay of clerks so if you have 64 with 2 you have 128 with 3 we have 192 with 4 you have 256 total so in that curve the top line total expected cost so this we can get by adding ELF so you add ELF you get 564 406 so obviously 392 is the lowest one so we can say this is the so obviously operating with three clerks will provide the lowest cost uh, in this situation so now let's uh, look at what what are the various characteristics of waiting lines so i'm going to make uh, that simple chart again you have arrivals in front of a service facility if the service facility is busy after the service there is a departure if you look at arrivals there is something called size of the calling population from where all these arrivals are taking place now size of the calling population could be unlimited or limited so one example of limited let's say in a company there is a small department where there are only five people working 
and they have a coffee machine so number of people who will basically use that the coffee machine service is very limited only five people can use so the calling population or size of calling population in that situation will be limited because that's very small number uh, but if you take example of like toll booth at a freeway and so many cars are coming and sometimes they will form a queue so there we cannot uh, put a number and say okay number of cars are going to be only say 5 or 10 or 50 on a given day that number could be anything so theoretically uh, we can say that the calling population at the toll booth is more of an unlimited type because it could be very very large similarly number of people who are coming to a shopping mall or say walmart or target so how many people come on a given day theoretically could be unlimited another characteristic of arrivals is the pattern pattern of those arrivals so if somebody collects data and uh, for any service facility and looks at like how many people or items are arriving at the facility uh, per hour and make pattern or a histogram or a bar chart so that basically most of the times in uh, most situations we can model that data using poisson distribution so poisson distribution is a very commonly used method for modeling pattern of arrivals another characteristic of waiting lines or arrivals before the queue forms is behavior so behavior could be like one standard thing is bulk uh, suppose somebody wants to use a service facility and sees that there is a big queue there and so this person may be in a hurry and decides not to join the queue and basically whatever item uh, he or she wanted to purchase they may not do it and just leave so that is called bulk another behavior behavior is rinage so rinage is uh, that person has joined the queue and after joining the queue this person becomes very impatient so maybe there is uh, one customer who is taking a lot of time due to whatever complexity maybe credit card is not working or check has a problem so this customer uh, after uh, getting very impatient decides to leave the queue so that is reneging and another characteristic or behavior is jockey so jockey as you know like basically is a shifting from one queue to the other queue so this is very common like uh, when we are driving on uh, freeway or uh, when you have several lanes and if there is a traffic jam it always seems that the other lane is moving slightly faster and you try to change uh, from one lane to the another lane so that you can go faster so that is that behavior is called jockey similarly queue itself may have some characteristics so one characteristic of queue is length now length could be unlimited or limited so once again if i give example of uh, that uh, small department where there is a coffee machine and there are only five employees working so even when they uh, come for somebody comes for using that coffee facility there may be one or two people already there and this person may have to wait to get the turn but for all practical reasons uh, the length will be very limited maximum four or five so that is limited example and length can be unlimited uh, especially depending on the calling population if the calling population is unlimited so obviously queue length will be unlimited another characteristic of queue is discipline so first in first out or first in last out uh, these are very common characteristics in terms of discipline for a queue so first in first out obviously if it is uh, if you are dealing with people so whoever has come first to get the service 
will be the first one to be out. But if these are like items which are loaded on trucks, so when the items get loaded on the truck and when they have to be unloaded, so, so it would be actually last in first out or whichever is first in, they will be last out. So those items which were placed on the truck first, they will be last one to go out. So that is called FILO. Service facility also can have different characteristics. One is in terms of configuration, like right? how the service facility is configured, and the other characteristic is in terms of pattern. Now, if you look at the first one, configuration. So this is for configuration. I am going to make a small table. So configuration can depend on channels or phases. Now channels could be single or you could have a multi-channel system. Similarly phases. So single channel and single phase looks like this. So you have this service facility and there are arrivals and there is a single queue formation. They take the service and they are out. Now single channel multi-phase. So you have arrivals to a service facility and then there is a departure but then they are still not done. So there could be a queue formation again because there is another service facility they have to pass through and then they are out. So one example is like uh, Dunkin Donuts. So at the first one, first service facility, uh, you may place an order that you need coffee and then you get the coffee, pay the bill and then you depart. There is a single queue which forms here. But from that single queue, you can be sent to any of the service facilities which are available. And once you are done, you are out. So you depart. So this is uh, very common at uh, airports, at the screening facility. So you stand in the queue and then you may be asked to join any one of the three. And once you are done there, basically you are out. Again, you have a queue from where you could be sent to any of the two facilities. After you are done with this, you again need to go through another service facility. So from here you could go here and from here you could go to any one of the two and then we are out. So these are like different uh, configurations of service facility you may come across. Similarly coming to the next one, pattern. Now pattern could be constant or random. So service facility could have a pattern that is constant like every time it takes exactly same time. So for example car wash. So whether you have a new car or a dirty car, uh, the time it, it is going to take same standard time. But uh, if you are at a mall and you are checking out with certain items, so from person to person or customer to customer, there could be some variability. So when we talk about random, we can have this kind of situation where you have service time on x-axis and on y-axis, you have the probability of getting that service done and you may get this pattern. So this pattern means, for example, at this point, at low service times, most of the customers are taken care. But for some customers, on the right side, you can see it takes a lot more time. But those customers are very few in number. So this is actually called exponential distribution. So exponential distribution is a very commonly used statistical method for modeling uh, service facility. Uh, pattern which is uh, random in nature. Now let's look at four different models that are commonly used. Now the calculations involving these uh, different uh, models could be very very sometimes it could be complex and more involved. So what we do here is we make use of a software called QM for Windows. 
if you go to our course website this is a class schedule 3 so you look at the second item it is called km for windows if you click there it is going to take you to this particular website from where you can download and install km for windows so as the name indicates uh, this software is only meant for uh, windows platform uh, so far i think they don't have anything for mac and uh, this software is also uploaded in our uh, uh, computer rooms so you have like more than one way to access this so i'm going to use this uh, software for doing the calculation now let's look at model one model one is written as so i'm going to explain what each of these uh, mean so the first one is called poison arrival rate so basically this captures arrival characteristic and we make use of poison distribution to model arrivals and generally we represent this by greek alphabet lambda so it looks like this this second one is called exponential service times and this we represent by greek alphabet mu so it looks like this and the one here means it is a single channel 